YouTubers, welcome to the channel. I'm Wayne. Today we're talking about improvisational roadmaps. There's a lot of different ways we can look at that. I think a common use of that term is if we're playing, if we're navigating a series of chords and we're using different arpeggios and different shapes on the fretboard and where they would connect, thinking of the fretboard as a roadmap, which is a really great idea. And this is going to go right into the application category of a lot of the other things you might have watched videos about on this channel. So some of the, well, actually all of the things that we're using to put this together, I'm, I'm just going to kind of glance across those thoughts. And if you're not keeping up, then you can refer to the videos that are more in depth. But what I was playing there on the front it's just kind of a groove thing in A minor or A blues, however you wanted to think of it. A lot of times I'm sliding into a um, major third note, but at its core, there are three different things that are making up this improvisational roadmap. And the first one, this blues scale... in first position, A blues. You might already play a lot of licks based out of that scale. Those David Grisman licks that we all love. But it is technically a blues scale. Which means that we could play that over an A, D, or an E chord. Especially if they're seven chords. I have a video about seven chords, seventh chords up. If you're not following along with that, that you could go to. So I'm going to have, I'm making up this improvisational roadmap, this blues scale. I'm shifting up to an A note there, where I could play a closed position blues scale. You can get that from yet another video that's here on the channel. So those two scales... of playing over them you could break those down in thirds make an exercise out of it if you're not really comfortable with those at this point but that's the whole that's the concept i guess that's maybe the biggest thing that i'm introducing today if you're not already familiar with trying to take a different series of things that you could put together so also, in first position, I was playing, at different times, a G major scale, starting on an A note. Which is such a great mode to use for a minor or a blues sound. Again... Play through some of those exercises and get used to that in first position if you're not already. We're just shifting that tonal center up to the A note. So then the other more adventurous things on the fretboard, all the way up to here. That could be part of our improvisational roadmap also. Look how I have the blues scale A note on the 12th fret of the A string, and I can't really finish that entire shape. This G and A note would be so high, probably I'm not even going to play those notes. So I just have this little piece. And then I used the G scale again, only a double stop version. playing right over those double stops to get back to this position of the blues scale. So again, if we want to be able to navigate the fretboard, here's more of our roadmap, the G double stop scale. G 
just sounds like G when we land there. One more interval would take us up to that shape that's going to represent an A minor chord. That phrase consisted of the blues here. G major into the low blues. All the way up to the high position here. So that makes our road map kind of come together. These are all things that I've talked about. I love the G major scale, especially those double stops, creates this opportunity to use all of the real estate on the mandolin. The other blues position that we would have is the opposite side of that shape. Closed position blues from here, check it out. Seventh fret. There's the root note. We're going to play that note on our middle finger, just like we do here. And then we don't have quite as easy of an access down to the low A note, but it doesn't matter. We could still play. We could use an open G string and shift back to first position. So by adding that, I guess the main reason for it is that that particular place on the fretboard we weren't really using as part of our improvisational roadmap because when you think of a blues anywhere that your hand falls on the neck of the mandolin you would want to be able to play not just this chord voicing but anything it, it could be a b flat major seven you should be able to play that anywhere that your hand falls on the fretboard and, and I think riffs like this what I was playing on the front of the video are very important because we're learning the fretboard and putting all that together then when a chord comes up say over a little bit tougher chord progression to improvise over and all of a sudden you have an A minor or an A minor 7 chord all of this experience from riffing and just having a jam session by yourself like this all of that information is kind of going to boot up into your brain because when you think of A minor 7, it shouldn't just be wherever the arpeggios on the fretboard would be that you were familiar with. It should be the entire neck. It should be all of the fretboard and all of the experiences you've had that are going to help you to play that chord voice wherever you are. Then you can build that into the next chord that's going to happen. So... For now, let's just think about the concept of an improvisational roadmap and put it together in this fun kind of way and play some blues, maybe with a drum loop or a 12-bar blues backing track, anything like that, just to get you putting the different components together that we study. I hope this helps you guys. If you want some one-on-one -on -one Skype, I have an email in the comments.